All right, guys. So part of the training is being broke down with Andrew. Yeah, goddamn Volvo is already. It's only the second day, and we got damn it. Uh, the engine is derated all the way. I can only do like 30 miles per hour. I can't even climb the hill. It's pretty bad. At least I got my student behind me, right? <laughs> oh, this is trash, boy. This is trash. All right, guys. So I made it to the shop. I'm in line, but I got bad news. Uh, Y'all know it's Volvo, and it's got the green engine. And uh, basically what Love's told me is they can sell me the part, but they can't install it. Um, that's all they could tell me. And this is the only shop. Is my man right here waiting on me? Still doing a real good job right now. So I can see he's getting lowered in front of me at the train. I'm getting loaded also. So you can see the mirrors. Getting loaded at the same time. This is our second load for the day. First load paid us $300. This, row, this um, load right here should pay us about $250. So today we probably would have made uh, $550. Then I get training pay on top of that, which is $75. So. I'm looking at about, uh, was it like 600 and whatever's left over? Pretty good for uh, running pneumatic. Oh, and I got a fresh clock too because uh, the first load we did was around, uh, what time was that? Uh, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. We took our 10 hour break and uh, we didn't start again until like 5. I think it's what, what the time it is right now. Oh, it's on the dash. Oh, it was 18.20. Whatever time that is. So we got a fresh clock. We're gonna run this load and hopefully we can get one more load. The goal is to unload this as fast as possible, get back here for another load, and go deliver it before midnight. The reason I say that pay cut off the night at midnight. So if we can get this load, uh it's going 90 miles, deliver it, get back here as fast as possible. It'll be a, a good paycheck so far. You know, this is only my third day. As of right now, oh, is that the super? Oh, never mind. As of right now, I'm at about, uh, let me see, this is my fourth load. Three, six, nine, 12, 13. I'm at about 1300 after this load for three days of work. And then if I get another load, I'll be around 1500. I'll give y'all an update in the video to uh, let y'all know the numbers for sure. And, uh, we get paid Friday. I don't think they uh, hold back checks here. So uh, Friday, I guess we will uh, do a paycheck review. I'm assuming I get paid Friday, right? Assuming. Nice low 5% gray with the automatic truck. In first gear, let's see how it holds. All righty now, starting our descent. Ooh, nice and tight, boy, nice and tight descent. Will it lose control? Still holding about a thousand RPMs. Nice tight drop hill. 80,000 pounds. Got a little ways to go. Got my student behind me. Oh, by the way, we're creeping. If y'all want to know what we're doing, we are uh, creeping. Student coming around the corner back y'all. 389 Peterbilt. It's just a second you'll see I'm coming down the hill. The reason we creeping is because we don't want to start our clots. And uh, with these new e law system, this is what you gotta do to uh save clock, save your time. You gotta stay under five miles per hour now. I think it's sand sticking now. Got uh, something to hit that with? Yeah, let me get that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So what you thinking, YouTube? Think because you got the latest, greatest shoe shine that you're not gonna get have to get underneath these trailers and do some work. I'm in a desert, and uh, time to fix the holes. <laughs> same old, same old, you know. That's why I'm the trainer. Cause I ain't been through it. I already know it's some BS, you know. That's why I wouldn't pay a million dollars for a damn trailer versus the ten thousand dollar trailer. Cause they do the same thing. They both gonna break in the same exact spot. Now this is the the the, the uh, students tra trailer, so you know. Andrew got to get down there and show him how it's doing. You know he got some tools and Andrew don't. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Out here in the desert, you know, ain't nothing to it. Uh, this is training pay, right? Yeah, we can pay for this. That's right. So basically he caught a hole right here we put the duct tape on but then again he caught another hole right here the sand started to eat through start to come out right there so we're gonna take it off the whole entire thing it just pulls right off right here how do I know cuz I've been through it a million times you take this whole hose off right and usually you got spare holes anyway here's a spare hole so we're gonna take this one right here off it just comes right out, you know, and we're going to put this one on. But the problem is the end of this, we need one of these, right? So what we got to do, we got to take what this off, put it on here. I ain't going to walk y'all through it. I got to go. I didn't think it would work. Yeah, that's when you do the poke right there. There you go. Nice and deep. Supposed to be the uh, tools you hear at Cow Hall, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot more shit in my truck, but. Yeah, most drivers ain't got no tools like me. <laughs> I need to get the rest of my tools that I had in my other truck since I left my home. I just brought, I had that in the back of my car. That's good. Yeah. I know, right? What? But you got tight handles too? Yeah, two of them. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna do uh 40 in the middle and nine in the back. Basically, nine again? Yeah, what that does is it yeah. evens the sand all the way across. As you get more experience, you'll hear people on the radio talking like 30, 19, and just random numbers. Yeah. <sighs> fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Uh what we're gonna do is dispatch want us to uh we're gonna we're gonna take a, how many hours you got rest? Like, I don't know now. Like four. Okay. What we'll do is we'll rest until about, say about maybe midnight, 11 p.m. somewhere right now. And then we gotta take off. Oh, they don't actually wait over here to get work done? Uh, if I get the work done, they're gonna cancel the load. Oh, shit. Money's more important. <laughs> yeah. I figure by midnight, I should be able to, you know, less traffic I can get over the hills. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and load at midnight? No, we're gonna load right now. Oh, okay. We're gonna go ahead and load now. I didn't want them to cancel the loads on us. Yeah. So I told them it was like uh, five hours, they said fine. What's going on, YouTube? You see, even when you get to the shipper, you wanna keep it below five miles per hour. Yeah. Below five. Why do we keep it below five miles per hour? See, this is the key to making. All that damn money. It might not be the company. It might be the tricks of the trade. I got to climb up here and unload myself. Turn off my cruise control. Obviously, I be cruising. Everything is all automatic and shit now. All, all that damn shoe sign. What the hell is he going with all that damn? Brother making all kinds of money. Did y'all see all that? That's that new hopper bottom, man. I wonder how much they paying him for that. Damn it, boy. You gonna take our damn jobs. That damn Peterbilt driver. Anyways. Alright, guys. So, one thing about Volvo is if it ever breaks down, the only person that can fix it is somebody from Volvo. So, uh, told y'all loves couldn't help me out. So, I'm back at the shop, the terminal. They got a, they actually, um, this part of the shop, what they did, let me explain it to you. So, this section of the shop, right here, this little building, is only for Volvo, right? They got their own building at the terminal, uh, just for their mechanics to come work on their trucks, right? 
Now, as y'all know, I got a Christmas tree going on here. We got the check engine light, check filter, regen. We got everything you can name. Here comes the caddy now. Give me a second. All right, guys, I'm in the shop. Pretty much, y'all know I've been having trouble with the uh, Volvo, the latest, greatest shoe shine. And just like our oil field trucks, you will be in the shop, whether it's new or old or very new or just got off the dealership new or, you know, 1999 old. It really don't matter. They all end up in the same spot, the shop. Yeah. Now, uh, y'all know these DEF, the DEF engines, that type of stuff don't work in the oil field because the distance you're going does not far enough for the truck to reach you in. So, uh, as y'all know, you had to do a part to reach you in. Well, I actually had to stop engine light on because the soot level was 100%, right? And uh, this, this particular Volvo is, um, I don't know what the suit and tie guys did, but there's no button for reaching and this is let me show you what I'm talking about there's no regen button so I guess the system was supposed to regen itself some kind of way but um, when it asks for the part regen on the dashboard you have to hit the uh, the switch right here not the switch but you have to like toggle through the menu and hit a uh, request regen so that's the only way you can do a regen. You have to wait for it to tell you to park the truck and do a manual regen that way. But there's no button or anything like that. And you know how long it took me to figure out how to do a part regen? Took forever. Took forever. I had to text people, hey man, how do you regen the truck? With the there's no button. There's no button. Who? Why put it on the truck and put no button? Do how, how do you expect the driver to know this type of stuff? Would you buy a truck? with DEF and no damn regen button and you wonder why the driver bringing the truck back to you 100% sit level you blaming him it's really your fault because what the fuck how was I supposed to know how to regen the truck and you got all these instructions look at this crazy shit they got all of that shit they got all that crap written up there itself for how to activate the regen Ridiculous. They tell you what all the lights mean. You know, all these lights mean regen, regen, regen. No instructions on how to regen, though. No. But it's the latest, greatest shoe shine. And it's in the shop. Now, I know what you're thinking, Andrew. How much money are you losing? Well, first of all, I made, I made uh, 375. Not my fault. I didn't make any money today. I did, but I didn't. Uh, we delivered last night, and we didn't uh, get to unload till 5 a.m. this morning. So we got there at 9, I believe, and we was on detention at 5 a.m. sleep. So after I delivered that load, I came straight to the shop. So I guess you could say I made $30 off detention from midnight to 5 a.m. or $40 or however much that is. And of course, I'm going to get a load right after this. And then we're going to make 300 or something for the day, right? But, uh... I don't know what it's got to do. I'm pretty sure he got to plug it into the computer because he's got the check engine light. And then he, he said, I know he got to change the fuel filter. Um, the main issue is when the turbo, it's always the turbo, right? <laughs> this is the number one thing in the oil field is the turbo. When the turbo hit 30 PSI, as soon as it hit 30 PSI, the truck starts skipping. It starts skipping like, like, I have to let go of the gas pedal, bring it underneath 30 PSI, then hit the gas pedal again. When it gets 30 again, you know, it just does the same thing. So, he says because of the fuel filter, we're going to see.